Now, I'm going to do a little a personal introduction here. <laughs> Kinsley um, is a student here at UNCP. She is a sociology major with a minor in American Indian Studies. Um, Kinsley is phenomenal, and I adore her. And uh, we talk about genealogy as we do as Lumpy people all the time, and she has her Locklear genealogy down pat. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's important, um, you know, we've heard of a lot, a lot from us grown folk. I'm just going to qualify my own age here. But we need to understand that our young people have a passion for genealogy as well and what we pass on to them. So I thought it was only fitting that we would have a young person talk about the Locklear family and the legacy. Um, the Locklear family, of course, there's a lot of Locklears. I mean, we get a joke, uh, a lot, especially from non-native people that come in the museum and they say, is everyone here named Locklear? And I'm like, no, the other half are Lowry's and Oxenines. I have a few dials and chokes and all that. But, um, so the family is well documented and, and lots of research. Um, but I think it's very passionate to hear this articulated um, from a young person and, you know, uh, the sky's the limit for Kinsley. So her um, end goal is to be an archaeologist. Um, to have a lumpy archaeologist is phenomenal. I mean, it kind of we could add that to Willie's song. You know, we got the Indian lawyer, we have the Indian archaeologist, and on and on and on. And okay, we're all family. <laughs> so little disclaimer. Um, I'm I I'm not going to go into every branch of Locklear. <laughs> There's so many um, that I found even in my own research. I didn't realize how many kids at a time Locklear's had. <laughs> There's literally 15 and 20 at a time, I'm not exaggerating. Um, but like Miss Nancy said, I want to be an archaeologist whenever I get older and more experienced. And um, what really got me into researching um, Lumbee genealogy is that I feel as though it could be like a major key in our origin story. Since everybody's like, where did we come from? Blah, 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 blah. You know, it's always the same thing. It's like, oh, you don't know who you are. Y'all don't actually know what you're talking about. I'm like, well, here's the paperwork, here's the proof. You can trace them back to specific um, tribes by last name where last names appear in different um, tribal communities. Um, but this past spring, I had a professor who said, for your final paper and your big um, paper project, I want you to research something that you can take in life and something that you'll um, feel passionate about. So for me, immediately, it was like, family, I have to research, I need to know more, this is what I want to do in my life, I can get started on my research early because I feel like this is going to take a really long time. Um, so I started with the person who sticks out the most in my family. So when I was growing up, I heard stories of Preston Locklear, he's the esteemed person, he's great, he's fantastic. My daddy would say, so you know your great-great-grandfather helped start the college <laughs> and I mean that was like a really distinct memory for me was hearing all of these great accomplishments that um, Preston made in his lifetime and for him to come from such a humble place and to be able to do something as powerful and that still withstanding is amazing to me. Um, so as it says, um, he was one of the first who got the idea. He's like, okay, we need a place, we need a school, we need, we need a foundation for our people. We need something where they can better themselves. And, um, he went and rallied with Hamilton and um, he got kind of the ball rolling on everything. He wasn't the only one, but he was a, a good figurehead in um, getting the process started. 
He's also the father of Governor Worth Locklear, who was the first Lumbee doctor, as I'm sure we know. Um, for this part, I kind of broke down my family tree, so it was kind of it's in a simpler form, I feel. Um, when I was researching, I actually found somebody above Robert Thomas Locklear, but I decided to exclude that person because I couldn't find the documentation to support it. That's one of the things when you're doing research, you kind of have to have the papers to prove what you're researching. It can't just be like, oh, hearsay, which sucks because oral tradition, but you kind of need the concrete to go behind it. So from Robert Thomas Locklear, there's his two children, well, his two sons, Johnny Wayne, before John Wayne, the cowboy. <laughs> um, there's Major Locklear, and then from there, I broke it down from John because John would be my did it, um, my direct descendant, or I would be John's direct descendant. You can that. So from John, he had Samuel had Zachariah, Zachariah had Preston, Preston had Harrington, and then there's my grandma Lavinia, my father Timmy Ray, and then there's me. Um, and I feel like it's a a really big thing to have context. That, that was my biggest thing when I was researching. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm finding these names, and it's cool, and you know, I can see where I came from, but who were they? What did they do? <coughs> what about them is significant? Where could I find myself? Or, um, like, where, you know, like, where did I come from? Maybe I got this personality trait from six generations back. You know, like, who knows? So Robert Thomas Locklear um, came on a ship called the Blessing from England to Charleston, South Carolina, and um, his probability of being an indentured servant was really high, which if you don't know, an indentured servant is someone who would have their passage paid, more often than not, this isn't like an end-all be-all, but have their passage paid from where they were coming from and they would immigrate and they would kind of work off the debt so they didn't make money from what they did, but it wasn't slavery. Um, he was traced to Edgecombe County and he passed away in Edgecombe County. Um, and then there are his two sons, but those are not his only children. I just feel like they're kind of like Cain and Abel in a way. Um, so there's John Locklear and then there's Major Locklear. Um, they were both born in Halifax County. They um, settled in the Longswath Smiths near Prospect, so Locklear Road. It's all in that same area. Um, and then on the tax list for um, Clayton County, this was something that I found interesting. It was actually in this in, in Dr. Olivia's research that I found this section um, about how how um, how, how Native Americans were considered taxable, which I'm not surprised, um, as people were seen more as things to own then more than as people, where it says, like, white women were not taxable. Um, I would actually love to learn more about that. I want to have questions. Um, and then there's Major Locklear, who's a little rebel. I was like, well, at least I know where I get that part from. <laughs> um, and he was believed to be um, harboring men who had carried out violence acts at Drowning Creek. And so the story was that there were these 18 men, 
two women and one other person who went to Drowning Creek um, and they attacked a village supposedly and it's in the uh, records that that's what happened. And so Major and other landowners took and they basically hid those people out and it was like Locklears, Chavis, you know, very distinct last names of the people who were named as the ones who were rioting. And um, it was, from what I read, and this was in Dr. Melinda Manolari's book, um, that they were more than likely related because of, well, we know how long you, you're gonna protect each other, you protect your own family. So, when I was going through and I was looking at the um, census records and everything past them, <coughs> it seemed that, like most people, they were either laborers or they were farm workers. So, not much changed until Preston. So Preston was men, even though he was a farmer and he was a logger and he was all these things, he also, you know, he was the headmaster at the school. He was on the board of trustees. He kind of, he made a name for himself. Where these other people, not necessarily fail by the wayside, but they, they lived their lives and they worked hard. They, they did what they needed to do to survive. Um, and you know, from there it was governor and Someone said for it's in two years. <laughs> Terry, these people that were living there in the swamp when the king's man come, representing the king, and they were going to start granting their land and everything, he tried to put these people out. Mm -hmm. And they refused to go, so he wrote and said they were like this mom. Mm -hmm. Because they would not leave their homes. They had been there for years. But they were living on the king's land. Well, they had no concept of a person owning the land. <coughs> and why should they be when they had been there, some of them, most of their lives? But the letter went to England that they were a righteous mob. And it was basically 13 families. And they had been living there on the Lumber River, Lumbee River. Uh, for years before the white man even came to this section. And so that was the label that the English put on them when they were trying to run them out of there. And, and they didn't succeed because they couldn't get them out of swamp. They couldn't find them to round them up. But they wanted them to go for the people who used to go. So that was the label that they put on them. It's amazing how resilient people are. And stubborn. <laughs> yeah. But if they wouldn't have been, a lot of people wouldn't be here today. So. Um, okay. So that's kind of that's where I left off, and I wanted to leave room for conversation because the Lumbee, Lumbee. The Locklear line is so vast and it really does branch off because I'm a double Locklear on my grandpa's side, but it's two completely different branches. It's so far off that even me tracing that one back, which I haven't gotten as far as I want to, like it never la overlaps. So if anybody has anything they'd like to share about the Locklears that they know, I'd love to hear. Terry, I bought a brave boy lock bear and we are relatives. <laughs> <laughs> I am the biological grandfather of Governor Worth Locklear, Preston's son. And uh, I'm so honored to be here today. And you honor my family, the Locklears, by your participating and, and applying your interest in the history. And uh, I'm, you make me proud. You make me proud. I have a question. When you found the name that the Locklear came over on the ship, mm -hmm. was it spelled the same way? Um, yes. Okay. Yes. From what I saw, it was. But, you know, accents, it's that and the dialect, that's yeah, weird. I know, I've, I've looked back and <laughs> Yeah. 
and not even, quite spelled the same. And even, and I believe there's like eight or nine different spellings, if not four. But it's funny because you can, you can kind of, um, you can say it aloud how it sounds when you're like, walk clear. Because usually with the accents. Oftentimes that came about, and immigrants were always educated people themselves. And uh, in the 1790 census, Locker is spelled five different ways. And so it's like Lockley, Lockley, Locker. So uh, they, the, the, person, the, the individual given the information uh, could not read and write most times. And uh, oftentimes the enumerator wasn't that literate either. Uh, and certainly weren't familiar with the communities in which they were taking this information and working. And so that's how that came into being. Yeah. And I found it interesting, I was visiting the St. Alan ancient, ancient, ancient Cemetery last year and I saw a headstone that said, uh, spell Locklear, L-O-C-K-L-I-E-R. And apparently they used that uh, because that was the birth spell. And I thought that was special. You know, there's an artist from South Carolina around Charleston who spells L O C K L A I R. Locklear. Jerry. Mm -hmm. Jerry. Jerry Locker. And so this, uh, the first oh, time I went to Charleston a long time ago, um, there was a restaurant, Mount Pleasant, uh, called the Locklear Restaurant. So, of course, that's where we wanted to go to eat. <laughs> and we did, and then a few years later we went back, uh, and the Lockley restaurant was still there, but they had become so famous, so popular, that they sold the restaurant, but the people who bought it wanted to keep the Lockley name, so they still have the Lockley name. And now they've moved across the road, and they're a very upscale, uh, more May restaurant now, so go to Lockley's and Mount Pleasant if you want to spend your money there. <laughs> Otherwise, go shopping. Yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned the word double lock there, and I hear that a lot. And I'm just curious how that happens. I don't understand that. It's banging about on the double chain with the double lock there. What does Mom. that mean? Mom. <laughs> um, Mom. 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 I but it were not. Okay. It's irritated. That's a whole other story. But um, so my they're locklear married a locklear. Yes. Okay, but they're not from the same tree. So there's no original locklear root. Yeah. They're from the same tree, but not the lamb. Yeah. Oh, I love it. There are some. Locklear Say that again. There are seven, initially there were seven Locklear Core families. I used to uh, work at the Tribal Enrollment and I can tell you a story one time. I, uh, I had a girl who goes to my church and then updated her enrollment chart. And I won't tell you her name for discretionary reasons, but she came in there and filled out her chart and pulled it out and she was just updating. I looked at it. And it goes back to the great great grandparents, which you do the math, that's 16. All 16 were locked in. Wow. And she had one, then when you go back further, it was Brooks, that would be great 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 grandma, three greats, but the all 16, even their maiden names for the females, all locked in. So when you say double, like I said, that's what we're saying is yes, they do marry. And in fact, that is going to even marry a long time herself uh, a couple years back. <laughs> but they're obviously distantly kin, but it's not an immediate kinship that, that prevents them from marrying. So we can I was raised always to talk about the marriage first, second, and third cousin. So in that line, none of those people uh, in the last couple generations married first, second, or third. I didn't check to see if the ones that was uh, way further back that had married uh, first, second, or third. But it happens and it continues to happen. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not just amongst the lockers, it's amongst other members, but obviously the lockers. It's much more pronounced yeah. because they have more to begin with. <coughs> but yes, it's, it's been so you going need on. To check your genealogy if you're a lot clear, interested in a lot Any room, any room, it's got four lumpy grandparents. I highly doubt you have one lot clear line. 
more than likely you probably have 10, 20, 30 different marketing lines. It's just a matter of can you dig enough far enough back to find it. Okay. Well, I, I myself have probably. I was just trying to connect to it, but apparently it's a big pool to try to find I myself have it. about 26 locker lines that I have right. on paper I can buy. And I, I said they obviously go back to the same one, but it's just a matter of.
any other questions? 